Multivariable Calculus, Section 11.8 Cylindrical and Spherical Coordinates Remember that back in two dimensions we had rectangular coordinates and I think you can see why they're called rectangular and then in 3D we also have rectangular coordinates there are just more rectangles. Now we also had polar coordinates in two dimensions where points were named by the distance from the origin and the angle from the um, line that connected the origin to the point and the x-axis. Well in 3D there are actually two variations of the idea of polar coordinates. One is called cylindrical coordinates and the other is called spherical coordinates. Basically you have a choice for your z component whether to move up and down along a line rectangularly or to use a second angle which is what spherical coordinates do. So we'll start by looking at cylindrical coordinates and basically what we do is we start with a polar coordinate for x and y and then just move vertically for z. And so um, if we add that little line there we can see that there's actually still a right triangle on the xy plane and so x and y and r and theta still have the very same relationships they had in two dimensions namely x squared plus y squared equals r squared because r is the hypotenuse of that right triangle and using simple trig we can see that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta just as in 2D and tangent theta is still y over x. Now cosine and sine are actually more useful because if you use tangent for example to solve for theta you get two possibilities and in 2D it's easy to draw the picture and figure out which quadrant you're in but in 3D it's a little bit harder so I recommend using sine and cosine because that will nail down the quadrant immediately. And z is just z. Here's a picture I found online uh, with cylindrical coordinates and it was interesting that um, this picture uses different letters for the various things. So we're not going to use those uh, but you may be re doing readings or something and, or have another text in the future and be aware that other texts use different symbols. We're going to use theta for the angle between the x-axis and um, the line that we're using and r is going to be the distance along the x-axis. And so we're going to use r theta z, not rho phi z. Now spherical coordinates are a little different. Um, what we're going to do for spherical coordinates is instead of measuring z straight up, which that dotted line represents, we're going to use the angle from the z-axis to our radius and we're going to call the final radius rho because obviously it's not the same as the r was in the xy plane. So the relationships on the xy plane are still the same. We've still got x squared plus y squared equals r squared and x equal r cosine theta and y equal r sine theta but we're going to morph r out of there and eventually we're going to get rid of x, y and r but we need these preliminarily. Now notice that um, because the red line uh, crosses two parallel lines that phi is also the angle at the top of that right triangle. And so r over rho, which is the red symbol, r over rho is obviously the sine of phi using that triangle in the picture and so multiplying we get r equal to uh, rho times sine of phi. Now we're going to substitute rho sine phi for r in the formulas above and that gives us a formula for x and for y in terms of rho, phi, and theta. Notice that the cylindrical coordinate is rho, phi, theta. So you have a, a, a number which shows you the distance to the origin and then the next angle is the angle from the z-axis and the third angle is the angle from the x-axis. I'm not sure why the z angle goes before the x angle. That may vary from text to text, I don't know. But in this text that's the way they're writing it. And then z of course is the height of that right triangle and so z over rho is the cosine of phi and so z has a slightly easier formula in spherical coordinates. z equals rho cosine phi. Now aren't you glad you don't have to memorize all these formulas or refigure them out? Just write them on an index card. Have them handy for your next quiz. 
And so now we want a formula for x squared plus y squared plus z squared because it turns out to be really nice. I bet you can probably guess. If you look back up at that first equation on this page, I bet you can guess what this is going to simplify to. So first we're going to factor out a rho squared sine squared phi from the first two terms. And you'll notice that now we have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is 1, so we get rid of that. And then we're going to factor rho squared out of what's left, and that gives us a sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi, which is also 1. And so now we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to the quantity that simplifies to rho squared. So there's another formula uh, for converting back and forth between the different coordinate systems in three dimensions. Number six, change the given cylindrical coordinates into equivalent rectangular coordinates. Four comma five pi over three comma six. So what we have here is r theta z, and we're to change it into x, y, and z. And so we use our formulas from good old 2D, they're the same. And x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and z just remains six. So here's our ordered triple, x, y, z equals two comma negative two root three, comma 6. Number 12, change the given spherical coordinates into equivalent rectangular coordinates. 6, 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 3. So what we've been given is rho phi theta. We want to change to x, y, and z. So we take out the formulas for um, spherical coordinates and plug into the formula for x, so we have 6 times a sine of 3 pi over 4 times a cosine of 4 pi over 3, and so on. And then y is rho times sine of phi times sine of theta, just plug and chug. And then finally z is a little bit easier, it's just rho times cosine of phi, and so our ordered triple x, y, z is as shown. Plug and chug. Number 22, change the given rectangular coordinates into equivalent cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Negative 2, 4, negative 12. Now this is a little bit harder, but not much. Cylindrical, we want to change x, y, z into r, theta, z. So let's do that first. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we can compute r by taking the square root. And generally it's easier just to use a positive r. You could use a negative r, but that confuses things a little bit. And then we're going to use the formula for cosine and sine. And that yields a negative for cosine and a positive for sine. And so uh, on the xy plane, we're going to be in quadrant 2. And that means that theta, which is in the xy plane, is going to be the cosine inverse of negative 1 over root 5. Now, the reason I'm using cosine is if you use sine, um, it would give you, if you use your calculator, it will give you a first quadrant answer. So it's easier just to go ahead and use cosine. And so r theta z is just r, which is 2 root 5, theta, which is approximately 116.6 degrees, and then um, z stays the same. Okay, now the same problem, only now we're going to change into spherical, which we, means we need to change our x, y, z into rho, phi, theta. And recall that r and theta are going to be the same as from the cylindrical um, coordinates, so I'm going to rewrite those in the blue box. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared, and so computing rho is fairly easy, and again, I recommend keeping rho positive, because otherwise the angles are harder to figure out. And then we plug into the formula um, for r. Well, we have a formula for r, so all we have to do is divide r by uh, rho to get sine phi, and then use our calculator to approximate sine phi. And the same thing for um, z. z over rho is cosine of phi, and so now we know that phi is in, again, quadrant 2 on the zy plane, on the zy plane. So we take the inverse cosine of negative 6 over root 41 to get phi, and our computation is complete. 
rho, phi, and theta as shown. Number 32. Change the given cylindrical equation into an equivalent rectangular equation. Z squared minus 2R squared equals 4. Then sketch the surface. Well, changing the equation is easy. All we have to do is uh, put x squared plus y squared in for r squared, and we have a nice equation. And then if you remember from the previous section, uh, if we divide by 4, we get standard uh, form, and that is going to be a hy hyperboloid of two sheets. Now notice that if z is plus or minus 2, then that first term becomes 1, and we get um, x squared, basically x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 has to equal 0. So that makes x and y 0. And so on my drawing, I'm going to put dots at plus or minus 2 on the z-axis. And then, for example, if z is plus or minus 4, then uh, z squared over 4 reduces to 4. If we bring that over, we get a negative 3. And multiplying through and simplifying it, we get a circle with radius square root of 6 when z is plus or minus 4. So I drew circles there on the z-axis um, at plus or minus 4. And so since I know it's a paraboloid, uh, not a paraboloid, a hyperboloid of two sheets, I kind of know what it's going to look like from the previous section. And then I can just uh, pretty it up a little bit. Number 36, describe the surface represented by the following spherical equation, rho squared minus 4 rho plus 3 equals 0. Well, that factors nicely into rho minus 3 times rho minus 1 equals 0, which means either rho is 3 or rho is 1. So that means the distance from the origin is always 3 or always 1. Theta and phi can be anything, so that's going to—it's like a radius swinging around, drawing things. Now in 2D, what would that do? Well, it would draw a circle, right? It would just keep swinging around in any angle at all, and you'd get a circle. So in 3D, what would you get? Well, you'd get spheres. You'd get one sphere with a radius of 1 and one sphere with a radius of 3. So this surface consists of two concentric spheres one with radius 1 and the other with radius 3. Number 38. Describe the surface represented by the following spherical equation. Rho cubed plus 4 rho equals 0. So we can factor out a rho, and then we have rho equals 0, um, and rho squared plus 4 equals 0, but it can't be 0. So the only solution is that we have a radius of 0. And this equation then represents a single point, namely the origin. It's not a surface. Remember we said a long time ago that you weren't guaranteed a surface. It could be a subset of a surface. And there's a picture of our lonely point at the origin. Number 44. Change the given rectangular equation into an equivalent cylindrical and then spherical equation. z equals x squared minus y squared. Well, for cylindrical, we just replace x and y with what they are equivalent to, namely r cosine theta and r sine theta. And then we can simplify that a little bit by uh, factoring out r squared and using an identity to make it look nicer. And then the book just stops here. Um, I know in the past sometimes we would solve for r or r squared, but evidently that's not necessary in this section. For spherical, we have to replace z, x, and y with their spherical equivalent e expressions. And again, we can pretty it up. We can square those uh, quantities and factor out a row squared sine squared phi, and then replace cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta um, with an identity. And also, if you want, you can divide out a row. And so we can make it look a little bit better. Number 52. Describe and then sketch the solid represented by the following inequalities. Now, because they're inequalities, we get all the points in between the origin and the surface. And that's why this is a solid and not a surface. So first, let's look at rho being between 0 and 10. So on the z-axis, I have uh, shaded in in red from 0 to 10. And then the angle, uh, phi, is going to vary from 0 to pi over 6. So I'm going to swing that in the yz plane, pi over 6. Now you might be a little concerned that um, it looks like phi is being 
uh, measured clockwise when normally we measure angles counterclockwise but if you look at the configuration of the axes you're actually going from the positive z-axis towards the positive y-axis which would be um, counterclockwise if you were standing behind this uh, picture and so it's still really consistent with what we've always done and now we can swing that region around the z-axis to maintain rho and phi and so if we rotate it around what we get is a cone shape with a rounded top this solid is a cone with its vertex on the origin surmounted by part of a sphere centered at the origin with a radius of 10 units and now I'm going to end with uh, something I found online that uh, shows clearly what cylindrical coordinates all about the blue plane is moving up the z-axis. The red plane is uh, representing theta and just twirling around the um, in the xy plane. And then the distance out from the origin to that green cylinder is r. And so this is a nice representation of what cylindrical coordinates are all about. The point that's being illustrated is changing the point is where the green cylinder and the red and blue planes all intersect. And so each of those intersections has an R associated with it, a theta associated with it, and a Z associated with it, which is changing. So now it's your turn. Uh, I think you will find these problems fairly easy to do.